Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Two Toe Tags Metal Reviews, and today we're going to be giving you guys our first impressions of Prickel by Ghost. So, we here at Two Toe Tags are both Ghost fans, and we are both very hyped for this release. I have only heard one of their song of the new songs in depth, and that's Rats. We reacted to it on our channel for the music video. I believe they are playing some of the new songs live on their tour right now. Yep. And I didn't really hear much. I, I didn't want to be spoiled. I wanted to wait until you know we get to the actual album itself, so I can hear the studio version. Mm -hmm. We did review Meliora on this channel, which got two toe tags. So the the standard is pretty high. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really enjoyed Rats, so I'm I'm excited to hear what else this album's got to offer. True. Um, personally, I uh, I heard another song other than Rats. I heard Dance Macabre, which uh, I thought was decent. Um, I think it's one of those songs that's gonna have to grow on me a bit if I'm gonna like it. Uh, Rats, I liked right out of the gate. I thought that was a great song. I find with this album, based on what I've heard so far, I feel like Ghost's sound is is changing a little bit. Because you go back to Meliora and, and other things like that, I got a very uh, 70s metal or 70s rock vibe from that. Old Black Sabbath type of stuff. With Rats and Dance Macabre, I'm getting a lot more of an 80s vibe from that. Um, of course, we got Cardinal Copia at the at the lead now, um, instead of uh, one of the Papas. So you you think that because they have a new frontman, they're gonna adjust their sound a little bit to reflect that. So that's what I think is happening here. But um, we're both excited. We're gonna listen to this album for the first time in its entirety from front to end, and we'll be back in uh, just a second to give you guys our first impressions of Freakal. Hey yo guys, we're back. We just listened to Prequel for the first time in its entirety. I'm gonna take the floor here and I'm gonna say that this album starts off with a bang and then unfortunately starts to kind of dip down towards the second half of the album. Uh, I'm gonna talk about a couple tracks here. Uh, one's my, one was you know, one of my favorites on the album. One was one of my least favorites on the album based on first listens. Uh, I'm gonna go with my least favorite first, but by the way, these are both instrumental songs. There's two instrumental songs on this album. I'm gonna cover both of those. So the second one, uh, which came later in the album, was actually track number nine. I'm gonna butcher this <laughs> this name. Good luck. Uh, Helvetis Fonster. Um, there's probably some sort of accent in there. There's supposed to be. I don't yeah, know what it is. That, um, over that O there. Over the O, there's a little accent thing. Uh, but anyways, instrumental song. Uh, you know, I'm sitting here right now. I'm trying to remember exactly what that song sounded like and I can't and that to me is a really bad thing because that just tells me the song's forgettable. Now there's always room for the song to grow, we always say that, but I just wasn't feeling the vibes at all, I wasn't getting a real, any sense of uh, any thrills or anything positive out of it. The song felt very unnecessary, almost like a filler, uh, which is never a good thing for a band to throw a filler on an album, it's a 10 track album. Especially, so, that, especially considering the fact that this is the longest track on the album. The so. longest track on the album, that's another thing. It kind of dragged on a bit. I just really wasn't feeling it. It's definitely my lowest rated song out of the whole album. Uh, I didn't hate it. I wasn't like bored. I didn't want to shut it off. I didn't think it was bad music per se, but it just really kind of just fell flat at that point. But as far as being the ninth track out of ten, like falling flat that late in the album, I mean, if you're going to fall, you might as well fall then, right? Either then or right at the very end. But on to a good note, um, Miasma, which was track number five. This song was frigging sick. For an instrumental, there was no vocals, um, hence why it was an instrumental. But you had, it has these like really cool, deep, melodic tones, but then they were layered with these like high overtones, and you get this awesome contrast that was going throughout the song. Uh, Probably one of the coolest uses of tambourine that I've heard in music in a long time. There's lots of tambourine in this song. Uh, it's very, I mean, it's just a tambourine. There's not much you can yes. do with a tambourine, but what they do with it is very stylistic, I found. It was very cool. The cool uh, effect on it as had well. A, had a cool effect, yeah. It was It was, It was. was just kind of popping and, uh, I don't know, it, it stood out. It stood out as something in a positive way and I really, really liked it. The best part about the song, though, was, uh, this guitar solo kicks in, and I'm like, all right, cool. Ghost has some pretty cool, cool guitar solos from time to time. Listen to it, groove into it. All of a sudden, that bleeds into a piano solo. I'm like, oh, nice. Piano, guitar, flashing back and forth. Pretty cool. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, saxophone solo. 
We're like, what? But this is nuts, really? and it sounds amazing. So you got, and that's how it ends. It ends basically on a saxophone solo, which was, which was a really cool outro. So, very creative song, very cool use of um, tone contrast, um, very cool use of instruments you don't hear all the time, being tambourine saxophone. Just overall, as an instrumental, this is what an instrument, a proper instrumental should sound like. A total night and day um, thing compared to the other one that I'm not, I'm gonna butcher the name again. <laughs> I'll bet it's Monster. Um, but yeah, those two songs really stood out to me. One in a really good way, one in a really bad way. Uh, for a first impression, uh, it's kind of a 50-50 for me right now, but you take the floor. Let's hear your thoughts on some songs. Well, I mean, you were talking about Helvet is Funster. I really hope that I got that right, because <laughs> it's a challenge. Uh, I really like how it started, like, I all mysterious. Kind of reminded me of the beginning of In Becoming a Ghost by The Faceless. Like, that was the kind of vibe I got there. So it's like, it started with this really chill atmosphere. I'm like, wow, this is really cool, putting you in, like, space. Mm -hmm. Then it picks up. Has some has some more aggressive music going on, which I actually kind of prefer the chill stuff a little bit more. But it did kind of drag. I don't know. By by that point in the album, the second half was kind of bogging me down enough, where I'm just like, eh, I guess this is kind of neat. I also do want to talk about which image though. This song kind of bothered me because parts of it was didn't really stand out as a song by this band. It really sounded like a generic ghost song during like, I think the choruses. The verses feel original, but a good chunk of this song is just like, you know, there's nothing that's standing it out as a ghost song. It's just basic ghost. Mm. And it's like, you know, you could hear this sound on any of their albums. There are other songs on this album that sound really unique and make it like very um, individual in comparison to everything else. But this song was not really a good example of that, except for, you know, the verses were kind of neat. But uh, there was this drum fill that happened in the song near the end that had this really cool filter on it, and that was really rad. That but was rad, yeah. Other than that, though, the song really didn't, like, give me much to work with. I also want to talk about uh, See the Light. See the Light as a chill song, like as a quote-unquote chill because it's, you know, a little bit into the album, so they bring the energy down a bit. But I, I liked how there was still a snap. It still felt like it had an edge to it, even though it was bringing the energy down. And uh, the rhythm was cool. The synth, I am a sucker for synth. Every time it showed up on this album, I was loving it. I loved the tones that this keyboard was getting, because it wasn't the same on every song. You, mm -hmm. You'd get different stuff from different ones. I think Miasma had a different so uh, sound to it in terms of keyboard, and that was really cool. But um, yeah, See the Light was pretty cool. Um, I like the intro, actually, Ashes. Started with you know the the nursery rhyme you know ring around the rosy, and then uh, and then you hear the band come in like oh this is some rat stuff, and then it stops and then rats just comes in with the drums only and it's just oh it gets you going so good, oh it was such a fantastic intro, but uh, I I do agree with you about the second half of the album kind of dipping down like you pretty much get all the bangers in the first half and then the second half. I don't want to say the second half was bad, because it had some good things in it, yep. it's just the first half is definitely overshadowing the second half, at least right. from listening to the album only one time. Right. Yep. Another song um, I wanted to mention was um, Pro Memoria. I feel like with that one it had like a little bit of an intro, and I, feel, I literally thought that intro was going to be its own track. Like I'm writing the name of the song in the notebook. I hear this intro, then I hear it stop. I look up, I'm like, is that the track? Is that like the next one yet? But no, that's part of the same track. So it's like, okay, you know, there's the argument of, do you want to have just one track only as like an interlude or do you want to just shove it in with something else? Mm. I've heard this done really well. I believe it was on um, Bleed From Within's album. They did a really good job at creating intros to other songs at the endings of songs. Mm -hmm. It, which is a really interesting way of doing that, but on this, it's literally just like a little bit, and then the song starts. So it's like, okay, is that really necessary? I'm not exactly sure. Kind of drags to me, and the outro was kind of long, so it was bogging me down. But like I said, that, that's the second half of the album that was happening for me. I also feel like Life Eternal could have been the second last song, because imagine if Helvetes Funster was the last track, and you yeah. get this big, long, you know, interesting, atmospheric, instrumental as the send-off. But I feel like Life Eternal was still effective as a final track. Mm -hmm. I just think it would be more instrument, more interesting for the instrumental to be the final track. Yeah, it's kind of weird that it wasn't. 
honestly, because most of the time, typically on an album, the instrumental, if you're gonna have one, is the last track. I find that a lot. It doesn't have to be. They can do it however they want, but it's also popular to have like a, the long song, the longest song, the big epic to be the final right song of an album, but this is not the case. No. So, I don't know, a couple other things I'd like to mention uh, before we sign off here. Uh, the vocals on this album I thought were really good. Uh, I think, uh, I mean, Cardinal Copio is still Tobias Forge, the same guy, but um, he sounds phenomenal and there's certain songs, um, looking at my notes trying to remember which ones I, I tried to point out, but I didn't really write much about vocals. I was just kind of thinking mental notes, but for Rats, Rats for example, the single, there's a higher part towards the end of the song. Um, I think it's falsetto, I'm not 100% sure, but it's really good. It's like something that I never really heard before in Ghost. Um, and there's a little bit of that sprinkle through the album where he's hitting notes and doing certain vocal stylings and different parts here and there that are new and fresh. And I really like that. I like that they're they're opening new boxes and going down new avenues, but still maintaining the same core sound. Speaking of core sound, um, at the beginning of this video, I talked about how old Ghost reminded me of kind of old 70s music, whereas the singles I heard reminded me of 80s music, I was still getting a lot more 80s vibes from this uh, listen. But in addition to that, there was also a couple songs like Faith, for example, which I believe is a song that could have been stolen right off of Meliora. It fits right in with that, um, that style. Uh, so it's kind of a mixture of both, but all in all, it still sounds like Ghost. Um, I'm, I'm eager to listen to it for a week and yeah. see where my opinions take me. Absolutely, that's that's all we got for you guys today. We're, we together are going to be listening to this album constantly, non-stop, for an entire week mm -hmm. so we can gather our final opinions on this album. And we'll be back next week for a final review of Prick Hell by Ghost. Be sure to stick around, comment, tell us what you think of this album just on the first day of its release. Like the video if you'd like to subscribe so you can catch that review next week. I'm TV Fish. I'm Vile Self. We'll see you guys later. Peace out.